True place in the lovely boulder, staring out at the mountains, but we'll be kind of going inward tonight. Um, yeah, if, if you want to have your video on at the beginning, you can. We're just going to talk for a few minutes, but otherwise, we'll be blindfolded, so uh, the visual is not so important. All right, welcome everyone. Here with some roommates. Two lovely ladies gonna help assist in the energy flow because and even though we're all connected online like we also got some stuff in, in the physical form too which is cool um so my name is joshua of you enjoy life i'm grateful to be here i've been part of archipelago since the beginning and um, it's just been awesome getting to do these different experiences and just be part of a community too where people are open to trying new things and expanding the mind and the body and the spirit and all that good stuff um, I love food. I'd say food and music are my two like life forces. I'd say they're my first two languages. English is a distant third. <laughs> uh, I someone I feel like when I'm ta- so I'm not going to talk too much um, because I feel like talking can be awkward for me. I appreciate it. It's a good way to communicate, but there's something about the energetics of food um, and of music that allows us to just drop into something much deeper because we get in tune with our vibrational being and we get to connect to something that's awesome. It's like the intuition inside of us. Um, when you look at different cultures around the world, especially more ancient tribal cultures, um, they always focus around food and music for ceremony, for ritual, for connection, for celebration. Um, And I think that's because they're such fundamental pieces of life. Um, And often what happens in in the society we live in, we get so disconnected from our food. Um, We have fast food, we can just drive up to fast food and grab a bite to eat, we can go to the market and and get a pre-made something and just kind of shove it down our throat. And oftentimes, you know, people are stressed out at work and they don't have, they don't believe they don't have enough time for a lunch break. So they just grab whatever's around and they're, you know, shoveling food into their mouth. Um, And there's, there's a lot to be said about the nutritional side of of food and cooking, um, but I'm going to be focusing much more on the energetic side. Um, And I think that's probably one of the biggest pieces that's missed in food. We're so focused on the actual uh, you know, what is it? What's the calorie count? And, you know, is it, should I eat diet? Should I eat low fat and low carb and this diet and that? And um, that's, everyone has their own journey and every body is different. You got to listen to your body. Um, and that's where I really developed this practice because I've seen over time going from someone who grew up eating really poorly, uh, box food, canned food, frozen food, and a lot of McDonald's, um, and then slowly starting to make that connection between how I felt and what I was eating. And I realized that there was so much more to how I was eating than just the actual foods. Of course, the better I started, the more I started cooking food and eating better, that helped. But also the actual state that I was in um, was a huge, huge piece of that. So a big part of what I'm going to be doing today, um, and if you've got your food in front of you, um, just kind of start to take note of it, is just developing a deeper connection to the foods that we eat. Um, I'm not sitting here saying that I'm perfect. I definitely have times where I have uh, just, uh, you know, kind of grab something quickly, but I've really developed a practice around food where I'm sitting, savoring, enjoying, and appreciating. Um, because if we eat from a place of stress, right, if you're stressed out at work, like like in the example, you have the exact same meal, and in one scenario, you're stressed out, and you're, you have a burrito, and you're just shoveling it down in your mouth, and you're not chewing it, and you're just kind of mindlessly eating, um, you're taking in that energy. Um, you're taking in that stress. You're taking in all of that frustration that's kind of like, you know, sitting with you, and you're it's becoming part of you. Food is this super intimate experience. Um, So if we're not attuned to what we're eating, um, it's going to completely throw you off. And if you take another scenario, you eat that same meal, but you're mindful and you're savoring and you're enjoying and you're present and you're relaxed and you're breathing slowly, well, the food can actually affect you very differently. Um, And as someone who pretty much cooks 99% of all their own food, even just the process when I eat um, other, if I ever do eat out, I notice how it affects my body differently. I'm very sensitive now. Um, if there isn't like that good energy and the love and all that goodness in it, um, then it might sound kind of weird and out there, but it's just something I've come to experience very full on for myself. So without further ado, if you have your food in front of you, um, just kind of note where it is. 
And uh, let's drop into our blindfolds, if you have not yet. Hmm. So just take a moment, once you get your blindfold on, just to get comfortable in your body. Just gonna play a little music to let you relax and just breathe. Just breathe easy. If you want to take some deep breaths, anyone that was just doing the Wim Hof, I was just there. Uh, just take some deep breaths in. And welcome in. If you're just joining us, um, we're just putting our blindfolds on and kind of getting comfortable and kind of dropping into that space. We're gonna start the process of going inward. And one thing I've found recently when I'm eating, even if I don't perceive that I have enough time and granted with what's going on in the world right now, I have plenty of time. I can cook for eight hours in a day and still have time to sit and savor. Um, but one thing that I've found is even if you just take a few minutes to really ground yourself before you eat a meal and just check in, um, it can completely change the way that you eat. So what we're doing here is we're just kind of starting to tune into how we feel. If you notice any tension anywhere, it's okay. You know, maybe you're feeling some anxiety in your chest. Just breathe into that area. And just breathe it out. So wherever you're feeling any kind of tension or Maybe you feel uncomfortable, you're not used to being blindfolded. Just breathe in and release. Uh, really ground your energy down into the ground. And this is all very symbolic. And one thing that's interesting about food is that um, you know, we can see the visual of it. And there's so much to be said about the visual and the presentation but it can also be a distraction. So when we take away the visual, um, what happens is we actually start to tune into our other senses. So you can actually taste more things when you're not focused on the visual. You think about how many times you've been you know, having a meal and maybe you're watching TV and you actually taste less when you're watching television while you're eating, even if you're having a conversation. If you're out at a loud restaurant and you're talking and you're kind of enjoying the food, you're tasting less. So this is gonna give you maximum flavor experience. you to do is to start to lean your face towards your food and if it's easier you can grab your bowl or plate and just kind of bring it up to your nose and just start to smell nice deep breaths in what are you noticing smelling the food and you're kind of taking in these sensations you might start to notice certain memories come up maybe a smell elicits a memory from childhood and uh, maybe it's a beautiful pleasant memory or maybe it's something that's a little bit jarring you know whatever that is just kind of like go into that for a minute you know as um as children we take in the world around us and, and we're conditioned to have all these thoughts and ideas and beliefs and we create these stories and this character of who we think we are it might be easy to understand it mentally, but there's this deeper physical connection. Um, so as we grow up and we're taking in food and we're constantly consuming our life, um, if we're not consciously consuming, we're taking on all these other external energies. So maybe as a kid, you know, you have really pleasant memories on food, but I know for me, food wasn't always a very pleasant thing. It was kind of this frustrating, you know, I didn't like the food and there was this tension in the household and um, I took in that energy and it affected me very poorly and I used to have a lot of bad stomach problems. It wasn't really until I started to develop a deep connection to the food that I was eating that that all changed. All right. 
So now what I want you to do is pick up, and if, if you would like to, I encourage you to use your hands if you feel comfortable eating with your hands. Um, if not, a utensil is okay. Um, I just say that a utensil is kind of like a middleman. Uh, and if you can avoid it um, by using your hands, you're actually developing a connection to the food before you even eat it. You're feeling it, you're feeling the temperatures, um, the textures and everything. want you to bring it up to your lips. Don't put it in your mouth yet. Just kind of touch it to your lips. And food can be very sensual, you know, so just let it be. Just kind of, you can rub the food in your lips a little bit. Maybe like lick it a little bit with your tongue, but don't put it in your mouth yet. our food a little bit. So once you feel like, you know, you've kind of rubbed the food on your lips and maybe touched it to your tongue a little bit, um, I want you to just take a bite of the food and chew, but don't swallow. And I will tell you when to swallow. And you notice as this is happening, you know, you're developing saliva in your mouth. You're starting to feel the sensations of the food. You're getting excited. Maybe it's a little uncomfortable. Maybe it's a little weird. Lean into the weirdness. I like the weirdness. Yeah. Now take a deep breath in through your nose. <sighs> okay. And you can swallow. still more of what you were eating in your hand, I want you to keep that in your hand and pick something else up. We're going to kind of combine them into two, sort of these different flavor combinations to see how things react together. And first, just pick them up to your nose and give them a nice deep inhale, very slow. When you feel ready, you can take a bite. And if you'd like, you can make sounds, sensations. Mm. Yummy. <laughs> it should be fun. There's, there's this balance of, you know, intention and, and seriousness, but also like childlike wonder. You know, when you're a kid and you're just like, yeah, laugh. You know, it's, it's like when you're a little kid and you're eating and you're kind of just throwing food around and your parents are like stop that it's like we're kind of bringing back that playfulness into the food because food is to me eating is one of the most intimate things you can do literally you're taking in something that's going to become part of you so if you're taking it in mindlessly it's going to affect you very differently than if you're consciously aware and to me i see food as a vehicle for self-exploration if you get too caught up in the actual food and you miss the fact that what food does brings people together, elicits conversations, helps heal your body. If you miss those things, you're only seeing the surface of food. So what we're really doing here is developing a deeper practice to the way that we're eating. We're getting really in tune with that. I call it EVCO, the evolution of conscious consumption. If you're consciously consuming the things in your life, you're going to evolve in a way that's going to support you. If you're unconsciously consuming, it's going to be negatively affecting you. Now that you've just started to kind of prime your body a little bit, I want you just to just eat and, and feel around on your plate like you're like an explorer and you're kind of 
seeing what's there. You might be aware of the things. You might be unsure. You might be kind of disoriented. Just kind of feel and see what calls to you. Use your intuition to see what you want to eat. And when you pick up the food, remember slow bites, slow chewing, enjoying, appreciating, and being present. I'm going to leave you with the food for just a few minutes and play some music while you enjoy and eat. And for added bonus, if you are with someone else and you're both eating, you can always try to feed each other. It can be fun. to the things that you're doing. And we have all this time now to slow down. And oftentimes the way we consume one thing, the way we consume our food is the way we consume our life. You know, if we're just taking things in because we just need to get it down and get on to the next thing, we're not actually being present. So food and eating isn't really just about that. When we wake up in the morning, we can prime our whole day. So if you take time to sit and be present with your food and kind of set that intention, it can kind of set your day up for this whole different experience. Even if you mindlessly eat, which even happens to me plenty of times, I'm able to catch myself much faster. Even if it's the last bite of your meal, if you realize you scarf the whole pizza down or the salad and the last bite of your meal, if you can just savor that bite, even just that is a good start. Because it takes time to build patterns and condition ourselves to do the things that actually make sense. you to do finish that last bite and just pause and just sit very still very calmly nice even breathing and see what it feels like to pause for a minute it's so easy when we're eating just like the moment food touches our mouth we want to just keep eating and eating and eating but just to pause and think about what is that craving right now
so whatever was coming up for you, just kind of like go into that for a moment. Um, maybe you're feeling extremely peaceful and relaxed right now, and you're thinking about how you could start to bring this practice into your life in different ways. Uh, or maybe maybe there's some triggers coming up for you. Um, and that's okay too, because whatever comes into our life, it's not necessarily trying to resist it. It's how we flow through it. What I've been seeing more and more recently, um, when I hear people say it's really hard, you know, things are really hard right now. Um, to me, hardness is really just resistance. It's like when you push against the wall, it's resisting your hand. So it feels hard. It's just resistance. So when we actually are able to flow through life, we can flow with the things that come our way. We're no longer resisting them. We're being aware of what is, and we're flowing through it, not from a place of force and control, but from a place of being empowered and growth. So the more we tune into the ways in which we eat, we can actually start to unlock other pieces of ourself. Um, I love to grow food, um, and I find that the more I am in tune with the entire process, the more I'm connected to different levels of the growing, the processing, and the cooking. Just naturally, I start to feel better and better and better. I start to tune in with nature. But the thing is, it takes time. So with the evolution of conscious consumption, it doesn't just happen overnight. Um, there's plenty of people out there with different diets and, and, and things, and, and they might work in certain ways. But what I found is, you know, it's, it's these small incremental changes throughout your life just by being aware. We have awareness. We have like the, there's, there's the mind, there's the ego that thinks it knows what it wants. And then there's this awareness piece. It's kind of just asking like, why? You know, why? Why do you think that? Why are you doing that? And the more we ask why, and the more we're actually present with what is, we start to develop these deeper practices. So if you feel called and you want to continue to eat, um, you can pick up the next thing on your plate, feel around and see if you're starting to notice some changes in the way that you're actually consuming the food. You know, the monks um, at monasteries, often Buddhist monks, um, they have this practice and this ritual of eating rice and uh, they chew it like a hundred times um, for, for like grain of rice. Um, and it's just this mindful practice of being present and sitting and enjoying and experiencing the moment. Um, I've even found I was on a, a long drive not that long ago and I like to sustain myself with food um, and granted I was driving I was still making sure to be extremely present with the things that I was eating um, and it was such a huge shift for me just sitting there chewing savoring and eating slowly because also when we're chewing we're masticating you know we're, we're chewing our food we're breaking the food down so if you just take a couple of bites of broccoli and swallow it your body has to put in so much energy to break that piece of broccoli down. But if we chew slowly, we break it down before, we actually can burn energy more efficiently, not waste as much energy trying to break things down, um, we start to feel better. But that is the awareness piece. The more awareness you have, the more you're able to evolve in the ways that work for you. So even though I'm sharing um, a lot of information while you're eating, uh, remember, don't be too hard on yourself. It's really easy to get in this loop of judgment. Um, 
thinking you need to be more or be in a different place than you are. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that because it's, it's that judgment process that allows us to actually grow and to look at ourselves. But there's also the flow state, right? So it's like you have the thinking mind and the flow state. And using the thinking mind to get to that flow state can be very valuable. I see nothing wrong with the ego as long as you're aware of it and you don't get too attached to it. So when you're eating, if you find yourself judging about what you're eating, see if you can avoid that. Um, I've gotten to the point now where if I really want to indulge on something, if I'm like, I just really want a donut, first off, I'll probably make it, um, which, which would be delicious. Uh, <laughs> but even if it feels like this overindulgent thing, I allow myself to do it. I don't beat myself up, up for it. Because when we beat ourselves up for eating the wrong things, all we're doing is creating this negative feedback loop. It's like thinking that we need to have, be in this perfect place and, and, and be super successful and have so much love. And, and, and we end up just constantly being in this feedback loop of oh, I'm not enough, I'm not enough, I'm not enough. Or I shouldn't do that, that was bad. And we bring in all this guilt. If I'm gonna eat a donut, even if I'm gonna eat three donuts, you best believe I'll do it, but I'll sit there and I'll savor that donut because why not, right? And what's wild is I found that instead of all the things that I never really wanted to eat in my life, I never really wanted to get give up, I should say, give up eating in my life when I was a kid, fast food and candy and stuff, just by doing this practice of sitting with food, being more mindful. Now, if I were to try to eat that kind of food, it would just be so obviously like not what my body wants that I wouldn't even miss it. So instead of trying to force myself to not eat the things that I know I shouldn't eat, I allow myself to savor something until my body's like, you know what, I don't need that. Because the, pro the practice we're working on right now, we're getting so deeply in tune with our intuition and what our body wants. We're connecting to our body because our body knows more. That just naturally over time, those things are going to fade out. start bringing in that love and just that appreciation for the present moment the blessing that is food and the blessing that all the people that have you know made this food possible that have grown this food that have processed it everyone that's played a part in getting that food on your table it's a freaking miracle even if you've grown everything for yourself or you just went and picked up something from a market or restaurant or something it's a miracle that we get to eat this food so why not honor it yourself too. It's pretty cool, right? this practice um, I claim no ownership over this it's really just like a relearning this is like some of the most basic fundamental stuff um, it's the same thing that I, the way I experience music like these are things that are all like God-given gifts the ability to eat and to savor and to taste and appreciate just like the ability to sing and dance sometimes we just need to get over our fears use these vehicles to look at our fears to actually make the changes that we want to make 
So this isn't something, this isn't any kind of revolutionary thing. We're just learning, like kind of relearning how to eat because we develop bad habits. Um, so even though I'm sharing a lot of stuff right now, even if you just take away one thing from this practice, even if that's just the process of slowing down, the process of going inward, taking a few minutes before you eat, just to sit there and to smell your food, to appreciate your food, where it came from, what it's going to be like in your body, and then just to sit there and enjoy. lovely thing about life is that you know they say they call the present the present because it's a gift and um, it, every opportunity in life is a chance to be present and it doesn't mean we're always going to be present but we can always drop into something so whether it's sitting down to eat a meal um, uh, whether it's washing the dishes and this is where I find meditation fascinating because when I first started meditating I had this idea that you know of course I, I close my eyes and sit in my room with the lights off and I listen to some Tibetan chanting and light incense and you know just sit there and just peaceful um, but what was happening and what I noticed was I wasn't applying that to my life so I could be really peaceful sitting in my room with the lights off but the minute I walked outside at the time I was living in New York City it was like crazy and I got swept up into it almost even worse because it was such a contrast um, when I started realizing that meditation was really just a heightened sense of awareness really that simple just being present in the moment just being completely aware um, I started to apply it to other areas of my life so now I see cooking as a meditation music as a meditation walking even certain conversations can be a meditation if you're completely present so this is really like some people call it the yoga of eating um, energetics food um, there's lots of great books and, and different resources on it but to me this is really just food as a meditation and i find it fascinating because when i'm sitting with the foods that i'm eating and i'm curious and i'm smelling and I'm tasting and I'm pulling apart with my hands and oh what if what happens when I mix this with that whoa 
you know, then I actually get to create this deeper level of appreciation for it and be in this present meditation. So if you're saying, if you're someone who's like, I don't have time to meditate, well, make eating your meditation, you eat at least three times a day. And the fact that we eat so much food and we're often so mindless, it's kind of amazing to me um, that it's such a big piece of life. And we just like, we, we just kind of throw it away by eating way too fast. Another benefit of eating slowly and, and present is that your body knows when it's full. Um, you eat too fast, as I'm sure you know, it takes time to register that you're full and then all of a sudden you're just like so full and bloated. But if you eat slowly and once your body's satisfied, it's like, hey, what's up, dude? I'm done. You know, I'm done. Chill. But walk away from the bagels or whatever the thing is, you know. Uh, so I'm just going to give you a few more minutes to eat. Um, and then I'm going to take, uh, if anybody wants to share, um, just kind of what's going on. And at that point, you can take your blindfold off. Otherwise, I don't know how the whole unmuting thing will work. Uh, but yeah, just take a few more minutes to kind of finish up your meal. And also think about, um, well, how you like to bring this practice into your life. I want you to visualize yourself um, in your day-to-day -day life and how you can start bringing this in more. And even if you have a few minutes to do it, whatever the situation might be, you can take time to pause and to check in and to eat from a place of just being mindful and being present. It's really that simple. try something this might be interesting but I'm gonna unmute everyone just briefly and if anybody has anything they want to share or something they're noticing that came up for them um, or any questions um, please feel free let me see can I maybe I can't I guess I can't unmute okay well so I cannot unmute I don't have the power but uh, if anybody would like to um, come out of their blindfold and share something you're welcome to um, but it's obviously been lovely getting to share this with everybody. How are y'all doing? Yeah. <laughs> relaxed. Yeah. I feel very relaxed. I didn't even eat. I feel like satiated just from sharing that. <laughs> Well, if we're all good here, I just want to say, um, again, uh, food, something we do all the time. So the more we can connect to it, you're going to start to notice as you deepen your practice with eating, other areas of your life are just going to naturally change. Um, and again, if it, it's easy to think we can go on a diet and, and maybe, you know, okay, lose 30 pounds in 30 days. Um, 
but usually when people die, they end up gaining more weight back. And I think it's because when we cut things out out of guilt, when we have these ideas that we need to um, not do certain things or not eat certain things and we guilt and shame ourselves, we end up actually making it worse because then we make it this sort of, un, you know, it's the forbidden thing. Um, and when it's forbidden, we want it more. So if we allow ourselves the things or allow ourselves to appreciate them, even if it's a small amount, then naturally those things just start to fade away. And it, life kind of takes care of itself when you're just a conscious human being. It doesn't all happen at once. It can take years and years and years. It can take a lifetime. But the more conscious you are, even if you make these small, tiny changes every day, you're not going to notice them necessarily because it's like your hair growing out. You might not notice your hair growing, but you know, a friend who hasn't seen you in a month is like, whoa, your hair's long now. So I think the more you bring in these conscious practices, the more shifts start to happen. Um, and life just completely just grows and grows and grows from there. I'm just, so I want to thank all y'all for being here today.